I want to introduce our speaker, Gordon, now. He's uh, a great friend of mine. We've been friends for so long now. He's also my mentor. Every time I have a problem with you, you know, I talk to Gordon. I said, Gordon, you know, my people are giving me problem. And then Gordon said, my people are giving me problem too, you know. It's not that now. We have some, I have some of the best congregation here the past 10 years. All you did was nothing but love me. So this is like an amazing church. But Gordon is a great man of God. He's a, he's a great pastor, pastoring a great church in Baldivis. You know, if you happen to be some, somewhere in the area, make sure you visit his church. It's an amazing church. And Gordon, you know, like a father that he is, guide me along, lead me along, mentor me. And, and I, I wouldn't be where I am today without his guidance. So please welcome Pastor Gordon Bassett in our midst. Thank you for a fantastic welcome, Rocks Church. It's good to be here tonight. Lost people matter to God, don't they? They really do. And uh, uh, it's kind of like a homecoming here because what a, what awesome worship tonight. And Pastor Daniel's been down to preach throughout church. Just last month, was it? You were down. And uh, it's kind of, it's the same spirit. And uh, it's kind of like coming home here. And where, where we are in Baldivis, we, we built our bought the property but we built there in 2000 so we'd have 14 years and there were no houses in sight because it was rural so we could play music as loud as we liked and we did now the houses have come they're right on our boundary and they don't, they don't all like our, our music well i think they love the music they just can't here's the thing when you're outside what you hear is the rhythm section and it's good and i thought I'm, I'm going to Rocks Church tonight. When I pull up in the car park, all the doors will be closed. I wonder if I'll just hear the rhythm section, just like our neighbors do. And I hear doof, 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 doof. And it's just the rhythm, you know. I think, hope there's some music to go with that, because that's what our neighbors are hearing. Here's the thing about the neighbors, by the way. Uh, some of our folk are going, what right do they got to complain? We were here first. We were doing this music before they got here. We'll keep on doing this music because we, lo we love God and we want to worship Him and we got the music to do it. I'm going to calm down. We do the music to win the lost. And if we're upsetting the lost, we're not winning the lost before they even come in our door. So that's given me a great opportunity. So I, I did, uh, did a whole lot of uh, uh, flyers uh, with all my address on said, guys, You've got to understand, we've been here for 14 years and you've just arrived. We've always been doing this music, but now we've got to get used to you being here. We want to bless you rather than irritate you. So we're going to try and do all we can. We're going to get acoustic stuff in to try and dampen down the doof doof. And we're going to still do music. We'd like you to come in and hear our music. Uh, if you feel you need to get back to me, here's my email. Send back to me. I'd say 50% of the people in the streets just around us got back to me and said, we've never heard your music. <laughs> So I'm going, oh, that's okay. Uh, but two of them have been back again and again. So what I thought I should do is go and knock on their doors. So that's what I've done. Go and knock on their door. Saturday morning, because I knew they'd be home then. And go, here, here I am. I'm the senior pastor from that church over there that does the doof doof. And, <laughs> and they go, we didn't think churches did that. I said, where did, where did you get your view of church from? They said, well, the vicar of Dibley. I go, yeah. We are not that. We are not. But here's the thing. When you get negative circumstances, you have the opportunity to do something good. We have something, the opportunity just to, to, to react against it. And we want to win the loss for Christ. I am so overjoyed with what you're doing. You're raising the money. I've been out to your site out near the carousel. I know where that is. I've walked on that site. And I can almost see that building rising up. And I can see the lost coming to know the Lord Jesus Christ. I can see them gathering. I can see them being in touch, being saved, finding salvation in Jesus' name at the Rocks Church. Because God has placed you as part of this church for such a time as this. I'm going to pray and then we're going to get on with it tonight. Father in heaven, thank you uh, for the Rocks Church. Thank you for the vision that Pastor Daniel and, 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 and the key stakeholders of this church have for reaching the lost. And thank you, Father, that you've given them that plot of land and that you've given them the, the ideas and the dreams and the plans to build a facility on that property uh, through which uh, they will be able to reach the lost. And so, Father, tonight uh, I commend them to you and to your grace in Jesus' wonderful name. 
Amen. Amen. The Bible has a lot to say about the, the circumstances of life and the issues of the heart. And, uh, and you can be sure that not all the circumstances uh, of life are going to be uh, enjoyable and pleasurable, yeah? Like neighbours who complain about the doof-doof, you know, uh, like, like that. Or the fact that last Thursday night, my credit card was frauded. Uh, three hotel bookings in Romania and two in Italy. And, uh, and that's pretty sad because I'm going to Sydney in about a week's time. I need that credit card, but it's closed down. And so what am I going to do? That's not, a, that's not a pleasant situation. We get unpleasant situations, so what are we going to do? What we're going to do is we're not going to confuse the circumstances of life with the issues of the heart. Circumstances of life are out there. They swirl around us externally. Uh, the issues of the heart, well, that's how we handle stuff internal. Uh, that's, 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 that's going on inside of us. The circumstances of life, uh, you, you don't necessarily have control over those at all. I, I don't know who the Romanian mafia is that's been rotting my credit card. I don't know. I have no control over that. But the issues of my heart, what am I going to do about that? What I'm going to do about that? Well, I have some. I, you can do something about that uh, with you, and so can I. So Proverbs 4.23 in the New Living Translation says, Guard your heart above all else, for it determines the course of your life. Circumstances of life just swirl around us. They are external to you. You have no control over them or very little control, but you do have control over your response and your reaction to the circumstances of life. Guard your heart above all else, for it determines the course of your life. And in order uh, for you to guard your heart, you need to keep it close to God and you need to open it up to God. I, I love this verse, uh, and I want to share it with you. It's from the message, uh, 2 Samuel 22, verse 25 in the message. It says, God rewrote the text of my life when I opened up the book of my heart to his eyes. Isn't that a fantastic verse? Uh, that, that's what we're needing to do. Open up the book of our heart uh, to his eyes. Th th this evening I want to talk to you about the external circumstances that sometimes are conflicts and the internal issues of the heart uh, that will bring about uh, the best uh, response or the best outcome to the external circumstances or conflicts. And our message tonight is based on uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 7. If you're the kind of people that bring a Bible or even a device, you might want to turn to 2 Corinthians 7. Uh, what we have in our Bibles is uh, two recorded uh, letters by Paul to the church at uh, Corinth. Uh, but as we read these two letters, we see that Paul refers to other letters that he had written. And uh, so, you know, the, we have... Uh, 1 Corinthians and 2 Corinthians, there's probably 3 Corinthians, 4 Corinthians, we just don't have those. And uh, w w what we have, uh, the church in Corinth, when you think about that, so capable, such a capable church, so gifted and so dysfunctional, yeah, church in Corinth, and so easily led astray. It seems that some uh, preachers, I, I would call them hotshot preachers, had come in under the, the guise of being uh, super apostles, and they had, uh, in so doing, they had relegated the apostle Paul to the status of inferior apostle. Uh, and this had led to, to numerous negative implications. Numerous uh, people in the church at Corinth are now thinking less of the apostle Paul. But that's not the only negative implications and ramifications. It also uh, ha had an impact on their personal response not just to Paul, but with regard to their response to the gospel, to their Christian lifestyle, uh, to their attitudes, to their actions, indeed to their morals and uh, their integrity. And so uh, Paul has written a very strong letter to address this situation and to rectify it. It's not 1 Corinthians, it's not 2 Corinthians, it's 3 Corinthians or 4 Corinthians. Uh, commentators, when they write about it, they call it the painful letter. It's the kind of letter where the church has not been what it should and so the apostles written a letter saying, lift your game, guys, you need to address this situation. I want to read you from, about it from uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 7. Therefore, since we have these promises, dear friends, 
Let us purify ourselves from everything that contaminates body and spirit, perfecting holiness out of reverence for God. Make room for us in your hearts. We have wronged no one. We have corrupted no one. We have exploited no one. I do not say this to condemn you. I have said before that you have such a place in our hearts that we would live or die with you. I have spoken to you with a great frankness. I take great pride in you. I am, I am greatly encouraged. In all our troubles, my joy knows no bounds. For when we came into Macedonia, we had no rest, but we were harassed at every turn, conflicts on the outside, fears within. But God, who comforts the downcast, comforted us by the coming of Titus, and not only by his coming, but also by the comfort you had given him. He told us about your longing for me, your deep sorrow, your ardent concern for me, so that my joy was greater than ever. Even if I caused you sorrow by my letter, I do not regret it, though I did regret it. I see that my letter hurt you, but only for a little while. And that, that's, that's, that, that's the centerpiece of our teaching tonight. I see that my letter hurt you, but only for a little while. And yet now I'm happy, not because you were made sorry, but because your sorrow led you to repentance. For you became sorrowful as God intended, and so were not harmed in any way by us. Godly sorrow brings repentance that leads to salvation and leaves no regret, but worldly sorrow brings death. See what this godly sorrow has produced in you, what earnestness, what eagerness to clear yourselves, what indignation, what alarm, what longing, what concern, what readiness to see justice done. At every point, you have proved yourselves to be innocent in this matter. I see you are hurt, but only for a little while. And I think about this, and we have issues that swirl around us, conflicts on the outside, but we have a heart on the inside. And when your heart gets this right, you may be hurt by the circumstances of life. And I'm thinking about this as you guys get all geared up to do a, a building program and, and to do the programs that you need to do to win the lost for Christ. This is a spiritual battle. And the devil will have a win if we don't get the heart matters right. And so you may have been hurt by someone in the church, may have even been hurt by Pastor Daniel backing the wrong soccer teams and all that stuff. But the goal is to be hurt only for a little while. Yeah? I see you're hurt, but only for a little while. 2 Corinthians 7, 8. Even if I caused you sorry by my letter, I do not regret it, though I did regret it. I see that my letter hurt you, but only for a little while. And so at first port of call when, when we feel hurt, you know, uh, when someone hurts us, is, is to kind of nurse that. Uh, and this message, while it's not a message to, to a call to minimise the hurt, but it's to show that the person uh, who is going to grow in Christ will, will, will not stay in that hurt place. It can't stay there. Only for a little while. Just a little while. How long? Only for a little while. 2 Corinthians 7, 5. When we came to Macedonia, which is today's uh, northern Greece, uh, Corinth in the southern Greece. Uh, this body of ours, the apostle says, had no rest, but we were harassed at every turn, conflicts on the outside, fears within. Conflicts outside, fears within. Circumstances of life, conflicts on the outside. Uh, issues of the heart, fear within. So what's the answer? H how can we receive the hurt of the conflict but stay there for only a little while. 2 Corinthians 7, 6 and 7, But God, who comforts the downcast, comforted us by the coming of Titus, and not only by his coming, but by the comfort you had given him. And so there, there, there are four parts to the answer of how uh, we may feel the hurt of the conflict, but maintain it only for a little while. And, and the, first part, the first part is God's presence. God comforts, he says. The second part is friends of your destiny. And, and you need friends of your destiny. Uh, in this case, it was Titus. Titus came. And thirdly, the comfort you gave him. It, it's the whole church together is part of the answer. But I said there was four, and the fourth one is it's you and your heart. 
It's you and your heart, how you handle your heart. So I want to give you some keys uh, to looking after your heart in this matter because the Titus, the God and the church, uh, that's not as personal to you as your heart is. That's right going on in here. This is your machinery. And so we're going to all get upset at someone sometime or another. That, that, that's just life, you know. And, and guess what? Guess what? You think, oh, that's right. I'm getting upset at someone. Someone's going to get upset at you, yeah? By something you said, something you did. That, that's just the way it is, you know. And I, I think a year or so ago in our church, uh, you know, we have connect groups. We have lots of connect groups. And we usually do the same program in all of our connect groups. And all of our groups did uh, a John Bevere program called The Bait of Satan. Yeah, I don't know if you've heard that, read the book. Uh, it's about taking offense. And so we did. I remember in my connect group, probably 12 people in our group, and they all said to me, Pastor Gordon, we will never, ever be offended by you. I never say that to Pastor Dan. I think they all have since then. It was about two years ago. I think every one of them has been totally offended by me since then. But, you know, I just think they have. Offense is sure to come, you know. So uh, you, you, you think about that. Uh, uh, you think about that. Who are you upset with? Yeah. I know you're the Rocks Church. You probably don't get as upset as we do in our church. But who have you been upset with? Uh, who, who have you upset? Paul upset the whole church, Pastor Daniel. He just upset the whole church at Corinth, 2 Corinthians 7, 8. Even if I caused you sorrow by my letter. He just wrote a letter and upset them all. I do not regret it. I see that my letter hurt you, but only for a little while. Uh, in our humanity... Our first reaction in the conflicts and the circumstances of life often will be to be hurt and then to react. And, and you kind of can't help it, you know. Uh, if someone says something that uh, calls into question your values or your, your integrity, your established thoughts, values, ideas, whatever, it, it sometimes seems to prod at the very core. They said that to me. And, and, and that hurt, you know. But if you stay there for any longer than a little while, the hurt will fester and turn into bitterness and you will be damaged. Uh, the root of bitterness too easily defiles, too easily takes root. Hebrews 12, 15. See to it that no one falls short of the grace of God and that no bitter root grows up to cause trouble and defile many. Defile many. Defile many. John Bevere in that series uh, about offence, The Bait of Satan, uh, writes about the deception uh, that covers those who take offence. They kind of justify it. He writes, we justify our bitterness, we justify our unforgiveness, our anger, our envy and resentment as they surface. We blame others and defend our own position. We are blind. We're blind. Uh, th this message is not designed to keep you bound in that spirit. It's designed to release you. It, it's not designed to minimize the hurt, by the way. If someone's hurt you, you're hurt. Uh, whether you're right or whether you're wrong, that, that's, that's not the point. The point is, if you stay nursing your woundedness, it will turn into bitterness. You will be damaged and those around you will be damaged. So no matter how much hurt you feel, how, how bitter you become, it, it, it will not bring down the other person who's hurt you. I think sometimes we think that, you know. We think if I stay mad at them inside, that's going to that's gonna fix them up. I'll pay them back for hurting me. Someone said, you know, that's like you taking rat poison to fix them. So I'll take all this rat poison, that'll fix them. They're sleeping happily. They're not bothered. It's you, it's eating away at you. They're getting a good night's sleep. They're enjoying life. You see? So we need to let it, let it go. The, the whole idea is not to minimize the hurt. If someone put a dagger into you, that's going to hurt. But the key words this evening is, you were hurt but only for a little while. Never develop a wounded spirit. And, and, and I, I, I don't know about you, but I've had many occasions where I've been hurt by the circumstances that have been orchestrated by others. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. I, and I don't know about you, but sometimes I do wake up at 2 in the morning. When I wake up at 2 in the morning, I, I don't wake up and think, oh, praise God, I'm awake at 2 in the morning. Isn't that so good? I can think of all the good things, yeah? Now, there's only two reasons I'm going to wake up at 2 in the morning. One is the call of nature. And the other one is someone has said something or done something that's irritating me. 
And when I wake up at two in the morning, what I do, I'm not thinking about good things. I'm thinking about the thing that's irritated me and, 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 and I'm starting to write a letter to this person. You ever done this? Sort them out. I'm, I'm typing up an email. I'm doing a text message and it's pretty good stuff that I'm doing. Well, it's going to sort them out, you know. I remember early in my ministry I did that and I woke up and had one of those two o'clock in the morning wake up calls and I'm, someone's upset me. So I'm, I'm typing up a letter and I'm going to tell them how bad they are. And I, I've done so good, you know. I'll sort them out. They read this, they'll never do that again. Hurt me like that again. I'll fix them up. And I thought, just before I send it, I better show it to someone. A mentor, Pastor Daniel, because we all need them. And I showed it to my mentor. He goes, that's a very best negative thing I've ever seen. <laughs> he said, Gordon, I, I, thought, I thought you were a bigger man than that. And I go, am I? Am I? And so I decided to be that bigger man. And, you, and I, th I think that's, I think that's, I think that's, that's true for all of us as people of the Rocks Church. If you've ever had the two o'clock in the morning wake up call and you're writing out that negative letter to sort someone out, I think you're better people than that. I think you need to rip that up and shred it. I need to put a match to it, offering it, offer it up as a burnt offering to the Lord. Don't, don't send it. It's not gonna... I, I remember 20 years ago, it's just over 20 years ago, it's probably more like 22, I finished up at my previous church in less than positive circumstances and I had a lot of people. That wasn't a two o'clock in the morning job, that was a 24-hour, lots of letters kind of deal, you know. <laughs> and I have a mentor, uh, Pastor John McElroy, up at Churchland's Church and he'd been through a similar thing to me and he took me aside I have a great ministry of coffee. I love coffee and John took me aside for coffee and he said, Gordon, everyone that's upset you in that church, you need to have a coffee with them and make peace. I had a lot of coffees. <laughs> I had a lot of coffees. And, and I think we need to do that. But by God's grace, I did that. I made peace with all of those people and I found release in that. I was hurt, but only for a little while. God said, while you're wallowing in the hurt, you won't be getting up winning the loss for Christ. So it's about time you were hurt for a little while, got over it and moved on. Go and start another church, Gordon. And I did. It's called the Bell Davis Church. Pastor Daniel comes down and preaches every now and again there, you know. So then he goes, invites me up to preach at his church. And it's good because you do Saturday night church. We do Sunday morning church, Sunday morning church, and Sunday night church. And so I can come here and do the one, and he can come down and do the three for me. And, <laughs> and all of you lot, because tomorrow morning... You're not going to church, but there's a good church in Baldivis. Come on down. <laughs> we have an 8.30, a 10.30, and a 6 p.m. tomorrow. Yeah, come, come down. 2 Corinthians 7, 8, and 9. Even if I caused you sorrow by my letter, I do not regret it. Though I did regret it. I see that my letter hurt you, but only for a little while. Yet now I am happy, not because I made you sorry, but because your sorrow led to repentance. For you became sorrowful as God intended, and so were not harmed in any way by us. Godly sorrow brings repentance that leads to salvation and leaves no regret, but worldly sorrow brings death. See what this godly sorrow has produced in you, what, what earnestness and what eagerness. So whatever, whatever external conflict that any one of us in this building tonight may have, uh, be sure that the issues of your heart remain right. You cannot control the, the external circumstances, but you have a fair degree of say over what goes on in your heart. Every negative circumstance gives you the opportunity to become bitter or better. And I'm praying for you tonight for the better option. Whatever your external conflict, whether, whether it's health issues and uh, and we're bound to have them from time to time, whether it's financial issues, and, and we're bound to have them from time to time, you know, uh, with, whether it's relational issues, and they're the big ones, aren't they? They're the big ones. They're so big that there's a whole lot in your New Testament about relational issues that plagued the early church. Read in Philippians, you Odia and Syntyche. I don't know what they were squabbling about and fighting about, you know. But an issue there relational issues, whether it's issues that you figure that you were treated wrongly, 
by a ministry in the church or a pastor or a minister or somebody else, or whether you, you were heard at work being rebuked by the person to whom you report, yeah? Maybe it was that. Uh, whatever the conflict, God has in mind that it will bring you closer to him. He wants you, it to bring you closer. Allow the circumstance of life, no matter how negative they are, to bring you closer to God. Get your heart right before God. Get your right, heart right before people. It's a matter of the heart. Watch this as we wrap it up. 2 Corinthians 7, 2. Same context. Open your hearts to us. 2 Corinthians 7, 3. You are in our hearts. And Titus has a loyal heart. Tonight is talking about purity of heart. It's talking about open hearts. It's talking about loyal hearts. And my big question, prompted by the Holy Spirit tonight, is where are you at? Conflicts around us and will abound. Little or no control over them. But in the heart, how are you responding to the circumstances of life? Get your heart right tonight. You were hurt, but only for a little while. Father in heaven, think about the circumstance of life and how easily we are hurt and how easily we hold on to that hurt. But Father, from your word tonight, we're seeing that hurt as a prompt to get our hearts right with you to have our lives fine-tuned so there'll be harmony in the church, harmony in our relationship with you, our Lord and our God. Thank you, our Father. Father, I'm praying for everyone in this house tonight, whatever their circumstances, however hurtful, however harmful, that tonight, Holy Spirit, you would touch each heart. And as hearts are touched, that people would feel the compulsion to move so much closer to you, our Father, our God. So, Lord, as we allow you to touch our hearts once more in power, call us to make it right. In Jesus' wonderful name, amen, amen, amen. Folks, I just, I, I just I, I feel this tonight. I want to give you the opportunity to come and stand down the front here if any of God's touching your heart tonight and you need to make it right with him. Would you come down the front and uh, make it right and have a time of ministry here tonight? Some of you are needing prayer, and I know you do that after the church services here tonight. I'm going to pray once more, and as I do, if you make your way out the front, then I'm going to pray for you specifically that are needing prayer here tonight in Jesus' name. Father, I believe so strongly in the power of your spirit here tonight touching hearts for people to get it right within themselves, with one another and with you. Call them down to the front, our Holy Spirit, for this time of ministry to get it right in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. Amen. Bless you guys. Father in heaven, we know that this is your time, this is your moment. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for visiting us. Thank you for restoring us, reminding us that we need to be healthier before we can become stronger. Father, thank you for hearts that are healed tonight. My heart that has been healed tonight. Thank you, Jesus, that in you we have already been forgiven. In you, Lord, we have been chosen before the foundation of the world. But Father, we confess, and we admit, sometimes we let the things of this world, we let Satan, the enemy, Lord, to divide us. So we pray in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ, who rose from the dead. We want to break every bondage. We want to break every power that want to de destroy and divide us. In Jesus' name, the spirit of unity will be in this church. In Jesus' name, I pray, Lord, the spirit of love, of power, Lord, of forgiveness, Lord, of release will be in this church, Lord. We will no longer be hurt, only for a little while, only for a little while, not for too long. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for healing. 
thank you, Lord, that in you we can be restored. We can be loved. We can be accepted. Thank you so much. I pray for everybody here, not just the people who come forward. I pray for every single person who's been hurt in the past. Father, I pray that they too can provide release as you have given them release. No bitterness in Jesus' name. No stronghold in Jesus' name. Only forgiveness. Only peace. Only love. Only acceptance. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We want to pray for Pastor Gordon. Thank you, Lord, for delivering, for bringing your servant to this place to deliver your powerful word to us. Father, I pray that you bless him and his ministry in Baldivis. I pray that you extend his territory. I pray the Baldivis Church will become a beacon, a shining light in that community, Lord, that will draw people unto yourself, especially those who don't yet know you in Jesus' name. Father, I pray that this church will multiply, Lord. I pray this church will grow exponentially under the leadership of Pastor Gordon. Father, we thank you, Lord. Provide for the needs of the church. Provide for the needs of Pastor Gordon and his family. We want to be grateful that we are united as one church here, Lord, supporting, helping, praying for one another. We thank you. We love you, Lord. Church, why don't you open your hands? If you still need prayer, I want to invite you to still come forward. We'll still be here to pray for you after the service is over. Father, you see our hands that are open before you. Father, this is a sign of surrender. Lord, we need you in our life. So, Father, I pray that tonight you, you, uh, you release us in your name. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Heavenly Father, and the fellowship, the power, the strength, from the Holy Spirit, be with you wherever you go. May you bring peace wherever you go. May you bring forgiveness wherever you go. And may you bring people to Jesus Christ, both now until Christ comes again, even forevermore. All God's people who are blessed, say it together with me. Amen. Amen. Have a wonderful week, everybody.